A lot of people like minimalism, but that means they don't get to spend as much money on themselves as, well, I'd like to. So I prefer to be a minimalist landlord instead. Today I'm gonna show you some of the tactics of the minimalist landlord. And if you like some of these tactics, let me know in the comments down below that you'd like more videos on the minimalist landlord and come visit me in San Francisco on November 16th. Today we're checking in on two rental property renovations, one expected, one a little bit more surprising, as in not expected. Fortunately, I ain't paying for it because the insurance is... And I own this side. Uh, yeah, hop in. And I'll be right here with my sweater from 2006 to help with commentary. Quick note before I start, double private live streams today, linked below. Come join. Now, in case you don't already know, I'm a 27 year old real estate broker and real estate investor. And this year I was fortunate enough to buy three wedge deals. Those are three below market transactions that each increased my net worth $100,000 simply by buying it. Thanks to not having to pay taxes on this money, it's almost like I made somewhere around $550,000 in income doing nothing other than some little renovations as a side hustle. I got a question for you. Should the landlord pay for landscaping or the tenant? The tenant should because uh, that way if they ruin it, then you can take it out of their deposit. So yeah. All right, we'll see you in a bit. <laughs> what did you just say? Max is a cutie. Now while we're on our way to check out that property with the big hole in the floor that's now hopefully been patched up, we'll check in. I just flew back in, so we'll check out the progress. I just want to explain the concept of latent defects. Know that when you buy an older property, like a 1940s or 50s property, there are going to be things that you don't solve during your initial renovation. For example, in our case, we did a $50,000 renovation, put in a new driveway, did lots of great things to the property, but we didn't update all of the plumbing supply lines or the furnace, even though they still worked. But what I like to do is I like to set aside money for reserves, knowing at some point in the future, I'm going to have to update those things. And the easiest way to have your reserves pool is number one, when you first buy a place, you're not supposed to use this as reserves, but you do get a security deposit that you can put into and sort of fund your first 10 months of reserves. And see, technically, if you have a property rented forever, you'll always have a security deposit there, right? So it's kind of like you just got 10 months worth of reserves or 30 months worth of reserves with a deposit like that. Otherwise, you're setting aside $200 per month because you want to build that reserve pool. So that way, when the furnace goes out, you're not crying about it. You already know. That's okay. We bought a place that has other latent defects and we expect at some point we'll have to replace things. Now we're just about to roll up, but I've got a quick update for you on China. I just want to mention that I've been following the China trade news, the latest stuff, which you should be following as well. Just give you a quick synopsis. Something I found very interesting was an op-ed article in the LA Times, and they said, hey, you know what? It's great that there's a sign of maybe a truce coming, even though it's not covering all the things we really want it to, but know this, American companies right now, they're still planning for more future Chinese American trade problems, which means they're still doing what they called a stealthy supply chain shift. So you might still be seeing a lot of American business minimize their reliance on China because of the unpredictability of this. In other words, it's quite possible that in a few years time, this whole China trade war stuff could happen, but have almost no impact as companies need or rely on China way less, which is great news for the world economy. Do you remember this house? Yeah. All right, let's see how this update is. You fallen, slipping and falling? What? We got insurance for that. What'd you say? I didn't slip and fall. Oh yeah? Hey, quick pro tip, when you open a lockbox, always scramble the code, even if it, you think it's just you out here, because somebody can see you go inside, walk up from the sidewalk really quick, grab the combo, and then guess what? They got the combo, they come back at night and take stuff. Now we're inside, and just to remind you, this is what the property looked like just a few weeks ago. Remember, this was caused by a plumbing leak, which fortunately the insurance company is covering the repair of. We have to pay our deductible and some slight extras, so we're probably out of pocket on this deal, somewhere around $4,000, but we're getting about a $30,000 to $35,000 renovation done. High-end renovation, everything's gonna be nice and beautiful. Now here's what the tub looks like now. We went with a classic subway tile and take a look at this vanity. I wanna pause for a second on this vanity and I wanna tell you a little bit of a cheat we did. Right here, when I pause, you're actually gonna see on the far left corner, that's actually a kitchen cabinet. And this is a very narrow cabinet that we actually bought the kitchen cabinet for about 120 bucks. 
the main sink vanity for $132, painted them gray, then cut the back to make it narrower because this space in this custom bathroom from the 60s is a lot smaller, but we still wanted it to be functional and modern. And then we threw on a nice quartz countertop sink back and ended up going with this wall mounted faucet fixture here, which I actually got on Amazon. I'll link it down below. Now there's still work to be done here. The tenants obviously have their things everywhere and the project isn't finished yet, but it's actually a pretty cool update to see what we were able to do with this hall bath while also saving a lot of money. Ordinarily, if you bought a vanity off like house.com or Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever, you'd probably end up spending somewhere around $2,500 to get a long with the cabinet, but the depth would have not been correct. It would have stuck out. The door wouldn't have closed properly and you wouldn't have gotten wall to wall. So we sort of hacked this and made it work and it's beautiful. Again, we still have to put on the door hardware clean, finish and fix up a few little things. So we'll show you the official after later, but this is a really cool update in my opinion. Now there's an update on the hall bath, which is next to the bathroom that had the crater in it. But let's quickly jump into another in progress renovation, see what's going on there. And then we'll take a look at this cratered master. All right, Jack, one more place to go. You ready? Let's do it. Grass and mulch. This is actually a little bit more grass than I would usually do, but I think we did it because it's got this nice curb that was already pre-existing. So, you know, it can be nice to just work within the confines of what you already have. You know, some nice drought tolerant plants along the side. This place is looking great from what it was. And this looks amazing. Jack, go look at the backyard. Let's see how, oh, look, the water softener's in, Jack. I got this filter for like 50 bucks and I think the filter cartridge itself is like $12. You can actually start seeing some dirt and sediment already in the filter, which is crazy. But uh, you know, with, with older houses, especially if they have older drains, I try to do everything I can to protect the drain health. Now for the water softener, I always like to use my Lowe's for Pros hack. I'm in for a total cost of this setup, usually around $520 delivered in materials. And the plumbers usually charge about $400 to get this all set up. Sometimes $500 just kind of depends on the job, which is not bad since most water softener companies charge you somewhere around $1,700 to $2,200 to do the same job. In fact, that last place that had all those drain problems, which the insurance is fortunately covering, we actually knew when we were buying it that, hey, they're not the newest drains and check out the addendum that we use to let the tenants know like, hey, baby the drains. We know they're original. We don't think there's anything wrong with them, which, you know, later we found out, we had no idea, but we definitely wanted to baby the existing systems. The, uh, the electricians came back and did the metal boxes. I hate the little plastic ones because they always fade and look like crap. They turn yellow so fast. So that's really, really good. Now I'm gonna show you some quick pro hacks. These are things you might wanna write down for your renovations, especially if you're looking to save money. Oh, yes! Look at that, Jack. Look at that glass door. Doesn't that look good? That looks so nice. Oh my gosh, you remember what it looked like before? Yeah. What did it look like? Uh, nasty. <laughs> That's right, good job, Jack. Oh, we got some cleaning to do here, though. Just take a look for a moment at the before of this shower here and what it is now. It's absolutely transformative what you could do by spending the money on the right things. This is what creates value in real estate investing. Just a heads up, I ordinarily would not do USB outlets, but we had a bunch lying around. I got like a 10 pack. I got it off eBay as like a lot purchase for like super cheap. So may as well increase some convenience for the tenants. Pro trick. Don't lift it in, because there's dirt under the box and that's gonna scratch the flooring. So I'm gonna put it on the side. Uh, I don't see the dirt. You can, by looking at the bottom. By the way, these had a bunch of holes behind the knobs. Folks, hack right here, pro move, brown washers. Get them on Amazon, link below. Cool, oh yes, they did this glass too, Jack. Yeah. Oh wow, sweet. So all this glass was rotten from water damage from what I presume to be or have been the sprinklers. And a lot of people would just put in, oh, I guess I have to get a new dual pane unit, which then it has to be tempered. That honestly would be like a $1,200 unit right there installed, probably with drywall fixes, maybe even more and a new sill. That fix was like 180 bucks and it looks fine. Yeah, just so you have it, here's a picture of the before of that broken window. Now let's finish checking out the nightmare renovation and see how much work we have left to do. Now here's the bathroom that had the hole in it. 
The tenants ended up having to stay in a hotel while this work got done, but the plumbing finally got repaired, the concrete got poured, and this is where we are now. You can see all that fresh lumber is being used to fur out the walls, so everything's nice and plumb and straight. Now, some people might look at this and say, oh my gosh, well, there's no insulation in the walls. Well, the entire house wasn't built with insulation in the walls. In fact, most 1960s houses and before didn't have insulation in the walls. This is where you could spend the money, open up every single wall in the house and re-insulate it, but now you'd be adding $20,000 worth of cost to the project and you wouldn't be getting that back in market value. Now you might be asking, why wouldn't I get back $20,000 in market value because I insulated all the walls? Well, you wouldn't get it back because nobody else in the neighborhood is doing that. So if five houses in the neighborhood sell for $615,000, which they've been selling for $615,000, and you added insulation in all the walls, you're not gonna get $635,000 because you have insulated walls. A buyer will be really happy that you did the work, but it's not gonna pay for itself. You know what this is gonna be, Jack? What do you think? I'll give you a tip. The water's gonna come out of that. Uh, sour? Now, not to complicate things, but this is how I actually went into this deal. I went into this deal with a $450,000 purchase price, and we know I spent about $50,000 renovating it. The budget, everything's available online. Well, I said that the house is worth about six. The comps in the neighborhood have been selling for 615, which, technically means rather than having a $100,000 wedge, which I always talk about, I'd have a $115,000 wedge. But what I told myself is the buffer over 100 is what I'm using for what I call latent defects, which we already talked about. That is, I know that I wanna buy this property and have at least a $100,000 wedge. That bonus value above 100 that is what I'm gonna spend on latent defects at least until I build my reserve. In other words, we just had to replace the furnace and spend that money on the insurance claim, so we're out about an extra $6,000. That means we spent $56,000 renovating a $450,000 property that's worth $615,000. To me, that's still well over a $100,000 wedge. It's still a very good deal. And it's the kind of deal that I suggest all y'all go hunting for and looking for. In fact, that's what I teach you how to do in the investing course, link down below. Jack, I have one door for you to open. Can you open this door? Cause there's supposed to be a new heater in here. Pull it, pull it. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Oh, that looks pretty nice, Jack. That looks beautiful. Look at that sediment trap. Oh my gosh. Do you know what that machine is for? Nope. It makes hot air. Jack, what's this? What? It's, that's called sawdust. The person who's making the shower didn't clean up his mess. Is that bad? Well, wait, it, it, is, is there a bathroom out here? No, he came out here to cut the wood and he didn't vacuum it. Oh. Is that bad? Yeah. Should he have cleaned up after himself? Yeah. I agree. Oh, thank you for the mega nerf bullet. This is like my inner child, but the Mega Nerf bullets, they have this little whistle in them. And the cool thing about it is you could throw it and make the whistle sound as well. Which by the way, if you're not yet following me on Instagram, you totally missed out on me winning two $50 bets in a row. One for running, one for swimming. I feel really proud about that, okay? All right, folks, well, there you have an update on these two renovations. Make sure to subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and uh, check out the courses down below for some more information. So that way you can learn how to get these wedge deals as well, because I got both of these wedge deals this year alone. And I'm looking for a fourth. I hope I can get a fourth this year. Which house do you like better? All of them.